This Klingon computer virus is giving me a bad feeling about things. With Ja'ula and House Mokai involved, I think we're looking at a serious new effort to capture or destroy high-value Starfleet targets, ships, personnel, even entire planets. Let's rendezvous with the Baran as fast as we're able. That virus is already in her systems, and after what we just dealt with, I'm guessing the Klingons aren't done with my ship just yet. Baran's in trouble. Those Klingons won't stop until she's gone. We need to get in there before it's too late. Mayday, Mayday, this is the USS Baran. We're taking heavy fire and need immediate assistance. Ah, you come to save your comrades. Honorable, if not foolish. Come, come and save them. If you have the courage to stand in battle against true Klingon warriors. That... that's a car! Looks like he didn't run far after Jehula beamed him out of prison. What? No good deed goes unpunished? You know, if I'd listened to the warden, instead of saving a car, this wouldn't be happening. You did the best you could back there, Elf. Commander. A car's responsible for his actions, not you. Let's focus on doing what we can to help the Baran. Looks like we picked up some more Klingon attention.
scan the area. Escape pods. Did she launch any escape pods? If anyone got away, we've... We need to find them before the Klingons do. Sick Bay's reporting in. Captain Lorca needs extensive medical facilities. More than you have on board your ship. We need to get him to a star base or to Starfleet Medical. I understand, Captain. The Ion Storm is getting worse and Pryor's world can't be left undefended. But if you can spare just one of your shuttles, we'll get him out that way. Please? He's going to die if we don't do something and I won't... I can't let that happen. We'll reach the edge of the storm soon. Don't spare the horses, Commander. I've had a lot of days better than this one. Enemy vessel on sensors. They're targeting us. Take evasive action. They're firing to disable. They want us alive. Shields are gone. Impulse is failing. Get us on the ground, Commander. Crash position. Great for impact. Any landing you can walk away from, huh? The tricorder isn't showing any serious injuries. You'll live. That most breathable? But this is a Class P environment. The cold doesn't kill us. The Klingons will. There's no way they're gonna let us go now. We need shelter. And fast. Damn. This place reminds me of some of the places my family dragged me to for a vacation back home. You really haven't lived until you go camping on Andoria. Makes this place look like Waikiki Beach. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Ensign. But those of us who didn't grow up on an ice moon aren't as amused. Emergency survival protocol. Break out the gear and supplies and find shelter. I don't want this weather finishing with the Klingons started. Reading some cave systems up on that mountainside. It might be a good place to set up camp. Maybe even a distress beacon. I can use the shuttle's emergency transporter to send Captain Lorca and another person there. Get them out of this wind and cold. It's only good for one transport, though. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, we lost some pieces of the shuttle while we were coming down. Some of that might be useful here. We should keep an eye out for anything we can easily salvage. Takes guts to beam into a cave with an emergency transporter mostly held together with wishful thinking. Now, we just need to get there ourselves. Fashion way, on Shank's mare, through a frozen wasteland. You take me to all the best places, Ellen. Should we worry about leaving tracks that the Klingons can follow? See those ice formations. Temperatures get high enough to thaw, then refreeze. So, the snow will probably melt enough to lose our tracks in the next few hours. Right, and if it stays cold and humid, we'll get more snow anyway. Good news. Now we just have to worry about finding our way out of here.
Wait. See those mounds of snow? Some of them are just going to be light powder. And some of those were built. Watch your step. There might be life forms in those. And they might not like unwanted guests. Kerwin to team. My tricorder says there's a piece of the shuttle manifold near your position. Grab it if you can, okay? We could really use it. We got your widget, Kerwin. Never mind the beasties. Uh, sorry about that. I wonder if they were staying close to it for warmth. Good work. Keep it coming. We're gonna need a lot more tricks to survive. Fumaroles. I was wondering if we'd see any, and here they are. Look, geothermal activity pushes heated water up and forms those bubbling mud pools. I wouldn't recommend taking a dip, though. That stuff is scalding. Kerwin here. I'm picking up another piece of debris near you. Looks like some live circuitry survived thanks to a Duraloy shell. Can you grab it for me? Thanks.
Hey, you see that? Over by the rocks? Yeah, I think it's another piece of the shuttle. What are these marks in the ice? Tracks of some kind? It's big, whatever it is. Let's not wait to find out more. I'd be happy to see a cave, but here we are. <sighs> I can almost feel my toes again. This was a good choice. Defensible position, adequate shelter, picking up some water inside as well. Might be able to cobble up some fortifications by carving out some rock. Looks like they're a little deeper in the cave. <laughs> if I know Kerwin, He's probably hard at work cobbling a warp core together out of rocks, a hypo spray casing, and a belt buckle. Captain Lorca's life signs are stable for now. His medical unit is functioning normally, and he didn't suffer any further wounds during the crash. Some good news for a change. Nice work, everyone. Let's set up camp. Kerwin, see if there's a way to send a coded distress beacon. To Pev, we need to know if there's anything we can use to survive around here. Nice. That'll be warm and cozy for a while. Listen, I have to count on you. Landry's competent, but this might be too much for one person to manage. There we are. And we have to be prepared to fight. You and I both know it's only a matter of time before the Klingons find us. I need to know you'll be ready to make the hard call if it comes down to it. You're dealing with Klingons. There's no room for weakness. The Vulcans know this. When you face Klingons, act from a position of strength whenever possible. When they come, you need to be ready to hit them hard. Give no quarter. You have. But not like this. You might find yourself in a situation real soon where doing things by the book won't get the job done. The people depending on you will die, understand? Trust your instincts when it comes to that, not the regulations. Be prepared to make the hard call. Check in on the rest of the team. They need to stay motivated. Ah, good morning. I'm still working on this transmitter. It's pretty banged up, I'm afraid. If only we had some more spare parts. Uh, I'll make it. And to think, I was considering becoming a hollow novelist before I joined Starfleet. Good thing I picked up a few skills with transmitters and recorders. Well, if you're serious about going out in that cold again, keep your eyes peeled for metal ores and deposits. Anything with magnesium, sulfur, or other reactive ores. Stuff like that. Stuff we can burn. Speaking of ores, we could also use magnetic or radioactive ores. Those I can use for primitive power cells. I'm a technical security specialist. Computer security, encryption, force field, surveillance devices, explosives, the works. It's engineering, but, you know, without the engines. A uh, little joke there. <laughs> I've actually known Landry since before we joined Starfleet. It was always something she really wanted to do. The chance to get out there, to live a bigger life. 
As for me, I was a video novelist for several years before she convinced me to join. I'm glad she did. On most days, anyway. Oh, and, and don't listen to Patel. I didn't join because I lost a bet with Landry. Honest. I'm mixing up some nutrient broth from our supplies. Not the best smelling stuff, but it'll keep us alive. We're gonna need a lot of calories in this weather, so we should try to find more food if we can. Well, we've already seen some wildlife. We're likely to find some edible fungi or mosses in the caves, maybe some root vegetation. I don't know if I'd want to nibble on anything more complex. Contents could be dangerous to us. I'm an assault team specialist. Close combat, automatic weapons, squad support. If it involves mixing it up in a fight, that's in my area of expertise. Two-time Ushan champion back in my hometown. That's got me through a few scrapes with Klingons. They thought their batlets were the last word in close combat. <laughs> they thought wrong. Damn right. Combat isn't Starfleet's top priority. But sometimes we have to fight to protect what we value. Klingons are finding out what Vulcans have known for a long time. And Dorians know how to fight. We fight to win. Yeah, I have a family back on Andoria. Two wives and a husband. And we're all eagerly awaiting a young one any day now. I all knew that signing on to Starfleet would make career demands on my time, of course. But I'll be glad when this is over and I have a chance to see them again. There was an Earth writer who wrote that young men always feel the need to get married, or get in uniform, or both at the same time. I wound up doing the latter. I just don't like leaving opportunities on the table. The chance to have a family, and the chance to serve, are both too important for me to let them pass by. Not luxury accommodations on Ryza, but at least the cave's secure. We need some more food. If something indigenous proves to be edible. Our emergency rations will get us through a few days, but that's all. <sighs> I'm here. Watching the Baran go. That was a hard hit for all of us. We lost a lot of friends up there. Right now, I think we need to get warmer. This cold's taking a toll, even in the cave out of the wind. Maybe Kerwin can figure a way to insulate the walls a little. As Chief of Security, I do a lot of team management, strategy, and planning. My specialties are in operational readiness and field leadership. Basically, it's my job to keep every one of my people in top form, and to deploy them where their skills will do the most good. Ellen and I have served together for some time. If you mean personally, well, let's just say that the Captain is aware. And he's given us the usual speech about how personal relationships can interfere with work, and so far, he's trusted us to be professional, which we fit. That's right. He's a pragmatist, and so is Ellen. She's really good at getting things done. She's not afraid to take a hard look at a tough situation and getting down to business. She tells me I have my head in the clouds sometimes, but I think she likes it, honestly. Doing the rounds, eh? Making sure your team's ready for what's ahead? Good call. I'd do the same. What's ahead? Yeah! Not a lot of good news there. Stranded on a frozen rock, no rescue in sight, and the sky belongs to the Klingons right now. Klingons! Beginning to wish I'd never laid eyes on them. Good point. The captain's still alive, and I'm not Commander Patel. Still with me. Still with us. Starfleet trains us to deal with adversity. We'll figure something out. For now, let's see if we can scrape what we need to survive from this rock while we're here. Losing the Baran. It's hard. 
know, I don't have much left. But I am ready to fight for it. For them. My people from the Baran, they're my family. Starfleet, they give us tools and training, sure. But the most important thing that they give us is each other. Should be enough. Let's go. Very big. I'm pretty sure I know what made those mods in the ice now. We better hope none of those come to visit the cave. done with the cave. What you got there? Magnesite? Ah, indium. We can use that. I'll take those off your hands. The indium can give us some power. Just don't loiter around it. It's radioactive. I can probably use the magnesite to make some explosive charges. You know, just in case. Explosives? In a cave like this, that, uh, that's not one of your best ideas, Kerwin. Even if we don't collapse it on our heads, we'd probably trap ourselves. We'd be stuck, unless we could burn a new way out with our phasers. Sealing off the cave entrance and finding another way out is superior to being devoured by those ice creatures you mentioned. Put the explosive near the tunnel entrance. See if you can rig up a remote detonator. Better to have the option and not need it than to need it and not have it. I should have just enough parts to make a short-range radio detonator for the explosives. I can work on that while someone else sets up these canisters. With the magnesium as an accelerant, and some of the gelled thruster fuel from the shuttle, they'll go up once a charge is applied to them. you made it back in one piece. 
Judging by the looks on your faces, you didn't come back empty-handed. Oh, that's good news. Come and have a seat, Ellen. Got a reasonably smooth rock, nice and heated up for you. Looks like the best rock in the house, too. Thanks, Emma. You're always looking out for me. Okay, let's talk next steps. Kerwin, we're gonna need that transmitter real soon. We've bought a little time, but not much. This cold's not going anywhere, and neither are the Klingons. You're not wrong, but consider. We survived the Klingon ambush, and a crash landing, and those things that tried to eat us, whatever the hell they were. The captain's still with us, and we have each other. Remember, we're Starfleet. We can't give in to despair. When times are worst, that's when we need to rise to our best. Agreed. Let's not lose sight of what matters the most here. Okay, everyone, get some rest. I know I'm being. Please tell me we have some more of that moss around. I need to pad out my thermal bag. It's keeping me warm, but this cave floor is doing a number on my back. business here. The distress beacon's operational. It actually works! I mean, it's ugly and full of hacks, but we can send out a distress signal with the beacon now. Hold on. If we use the beacon, won't the Klingons receive the signal too? If they're still trying to find us, they'll know exactly where we are once we turn that on. This cozy little cave will be crawling with Klingons sooner than any of us would like once that happens. None. Unfortunately, we turn it on, and it'll be out there for all to see, friend and foe alike. We're hoping that Federation ships at Pryor's World will hear it and respond before the Klingons do. It's a risk, but one we need to think about taking soon. Agree. They know we crashed. And unless they gave up the chase, they're still out there. And they will come running the moment they detect this beacon. Count on it. So. We need to be ready to deal with them, and buy ourselves enough time for Starfleet to get here and extract us from this godforsaken ice ball. To a point, they'll eventually bottle us in and use grenades or chemicals. We have to make it too costly for them to hunt us down. Catch them before they catch us. Ambush them. Here's the plan. They'll beam down at the shuttle wreckage and start searching from there. Their teams will eventually track our route, so we hit them on the way. We'll ambush them at the snowdrifts, then fall back, fighting our way towards the cave. Make them pay for every meter. We don't have to stop them, just slow them down long enough for Starfleet to reach us. Let's take position by the fumaroles and make the Klingons come to us. Klingons can be beaten. Meet them with strength. Seize every opportunity. Give no quarter. Fight hard and fight to win.
Get behind cover. They'll be here any second. Everyone in position. Ready. Affirmative. I see them. Wait for my signal. Let's give him hell. They're homing in on our signal. Head toward the cave before they flank us. We won't last long out here, even in cover. The cave's gonna be our best option soon. The rest of you should be ready to fall back to the camp. When that happens, I'll dig in here and cover your retreat. It's a sound tactic. If something goes wrong, you're gonna want someone watching your back. Keep the pev in reserve in case you need to withdraw. Think like a Klingon. Consider every weapon at your disposal. I'll make sure you have the time you need. Keep the captain safe. Tell my family what happened here. Tell them I fought for them. And for the Federation. One of you wants to die first!
since you're back, I assume that the Klingons are on their way. Give me a phaser. I'll be damned if I go down without a fight. Deal with you. Jolly Chook! But your captain is not you said. You will not enjoy his time as a prisoner of the Empire. Don't stop now! Take the time we use those explosives, Chief. Do it! Seal up the entrance! Damn! I know that look. What's wrong? Kerwin had it. What? Kerwin had the remote detonator. Make another one, then. No parts. We used everything we had. Give me options, Commander. Yeah, we're running a little short on those, Captain. Can we shoot it to set it off? No way. Try the whole package. Something with a tricorder, man. Maybe? I, I don't know. What, what the hell? What are you doing? Come back! This is the only way it has to be done manually. Wait! No! No, you can't. I love you, Ellen. Always. Always. <laughs> I'm not! I'm not, where are you? Can you hear me? I'm not! Ona, tell me where you are! Please... Come back! Commander! We need to get moving. No. No, I'm not leaving without her. She's gone, Commander. On your feet, soldier. Do not let her sacrifice be in vain. while for the Klingons to make it through the rockfall. Let's make sure we're ready when they do. Dead end. Give me options, people. Photon grenades. Breaking through. Klingons don't give up the chase easily. Let them come. I'll take as many of them with me as I can. Lorca here? Captain Lorca. Thought we'd lost you. Not from lack of trying. My people and I need immediate extraction. Ask and ye shall receive, Captain. Ready to leave when you are. Personal log, Commander Ellen Landry. She's been gone for months. 
and every day I'm reminded of her. I even have her job now, Chief of Security. I took it to honor her, to continue her work, to keep people safe. The captain's recovered from his injuries, mostly. His eyes don't handle the light very well. But like me, he forges on. This war, the Klingons, they've taken so much from us both. For me, for the captain, only duty remains. Long range sensors are picking up Klingon raiders in this sector. Ready for a little payback? Always. It's over. You did what you could. We all did. This time it wasn't enough. Not for everyone. I've heard from the surgeons at Starfleet Medical. They're optimistic about the captain's recovery. Though it's looking like he might have permanent damage to his eyes. Could have been a lot worse. They let me speak to him for a while and he asked me to pass his thanks along to you. I'm glad he's still with us. We're gonna need officers like him to get through this war. Officers who are willing to do what must be done to stop the Klingons, no matter what the cost. Congratulations, 